This content is brought to you by Scouts, the strongest Salesforce hub in the Nordics and Poland, bringing tech solutions to Danish banks. So, hi everyone, I'm Dominik. And hi, I'm Sebastian. So, uh, we were here actually last year. Uh, I, I wonder how many of you guys were here also. Do you remember? Oh, there's one, two, okay. Yeah, yes, some, some of you do. Uh, so if you don't, we encourage you to watch it on YouTube, right? Uh, like, link, subscribe, all the, all the stuff. Uh, yep, so last time we talked about uh, how Scouts was created. We, wanna go, we will go briefly through that, uh, if you don't remember, right? Or you weren't here. So is the coffee in there already? You've got the coffee, everything's okay? Because this will be fast, all right? Okay, uh, so let's go. So... Uh, yeah, as, as Lina said, we joined. Scout was created by joining the departments of Salesforce from four uh, different places, right? Three big banks and BC. We joined together uh, to create Scouts. Uh, we got like eight large packages with that, right? With all the legacy code from from the banks, almost a million lines of code, and only Odin knows how many metadata is there. And yeah, we figured a solution for that. Yeah, the solution for that, we're using org-dependent packages as small as possible instead of big chunks like big first generation or second generation managed packages. This allows, this allows us to go using this process. So now when the team gets new feature to be developed, they don't think about developing it already on 19 different banks or 17 or whatever. Uh, they think about, yeah, they choose a pilot bank. So a pilot bank is the representative of the bank. So they choose one pilot bank. They are working very closely with this particular client. They, of course, code, code the solution. Then they, they, they test it. We build a package. We install it on the production environment. The client is verifying that. They, get the, they provide the feedback. And yeah, the team is doing some changes. They are fixing bugs, all the stuff. And uh, when the solution is ready and it's already and it's already verified by one production environment, then we are ready to go to the rest, as we call it, it's a community development, a co community release, and then we go there. Yeah, and this gives us yeah. the benefits that, yeah, clients are happier because we are working much closer with them. Teams are happier because they can actually talk to the clients so they can better understand what they really want. So we see benefits in that. Exactly, so that, that was an idea we showed you last year, right? How we want to proceed, how we think going forward is okay. And uh, yeah, today we want to talk about problems that we and, like faced during all that period. So some of them we have predicted. Yeah, for example, we encouraged you to use org dependent packages, make them as small as possible. But of course, if you do them as small as possible, there is a lot of them. You need to be able to track uh, packages, the versions of packages, the dates of their creation, all those stuff. It's actually quite a lot of information. Right now in Scouts, we have around 90 packages already. So I, don't, I can't imagine like putting it in confluence with each package build because it's just too much. So we decided that we need to find a better solution. We didn't find anything magical ready for us. So the only thing we came up with is just to create our own solution. So we created something that we called the tool. Yeah, you, you, you see that we're good at naming, right? Yeah, this is basically uh, one, this is a place when all developers, POs, BAs, everyone can go and just see all the necessary information for them from different data sources put into one place. So they, they don't have to have accesses, for example, for production environments, accesses to Bitbucket. They don't need to understand how to read logs, how to read uh, pull requests or whatever. We try to put, it, put all the necessary information in this one place. The example of this would be, for example, this big matrix. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if I would like to go to see what package versions are, are in all production environments. I would need to have access there. I obviously don't have it. So we have all information in the tool. We can see which package is installed on what product in production environments in which version. This just gives us the overview of everything without need, yeah. need of this access and looking on, on for that in different places like DevHub, Jira, and stuff. Yeah, the, the table actually expands uh, to the right and to the bottom. But uh, the, the tool, it, it sounds like it's big and uh, like an enormous effort, but it was actually easy. We started simple, just calling some APIs of Salesforce, then APIs of Jira. It's it's actually pretty easy to, to pick it up, right? Yeah, I, I see Natalia there. She, she's the star of the, of the tool, like doing the yeah. hard work there. We also, it's important to know, to, to highlight that it's an internal tool. It doesn't have to be beautiful. It's just, it's a place where everyone can go and just see everything they need. 
Yeah, but yeah, the, the packages are one thing, but when you have a lot of packages, tracking of them is difficult, but there is also one even more difficult stuff, so tracking their dependencies. So yeah, you, you not only need to track packages, you also need to track links between them. So for that, we also needed to find a solution or we would be drowned. So what we did, we decided to go also with custom solution. So in each repository of a package, developers are putting JSON file with information to which package their package is depending on, and in what version. This is the uh, minimal required version. And based on that information, we are able in the tool to show the graph. And believe me, this is one of the smaller ones. It shows dependencies and dependencies of dependencies, etc. And also, this allowed us actually to also create a, a create a functionality that you just decide, yeah, I would like to install contact information package. Please provide me installation instruction. Then you can just simply copy paste this instruction. All the dependencies will be installed there. So we will basically don't need to, again, look for those IDs manually. Also, what is important, this uh, simple, because we still believe it's simple, right? Just the JSON file. Uh, it, it allowed us to also track Silk URL dependencies, right? That they're really hard to, uh, when, when you get them, because you cannot install one package without the other and the other without the first one, right? So uh, with this, we can actually find out circular dependencies pretty quick and untangle them early. Yeah, also, you may ask, what if developer forgets to put a dependency there? Of course, it happens. This is still a manual step. But it's much easier to find one missing package dependency than try to recreate the whole graph each time you need to install a particular package, basically. Yep, so another thing we anticipated were actually multiple triggers, right? That's, that's something you know we don't want to have. You don't want to have multiple triggers on one subject in Salesforce, right? So our Brave developers uh, created a trigger framework. Uh, so it's a package that uh, has the actual Salesforce triggers. And then we just uh, add actions to that trigger from uh, functionality packages. In this way, there's just actually one trigger that launches all the others. Yeah, so this one, the, the next one is actually funny because uh, we did a mathematician. Like, like last time we told you that uh, uh, the Apex tests are not enforced on org uh, dependent packages, right? Uh, Salesforce doesn't check uh, the cover, the usual 75% coverage and anything. You can actually put in a not uh, checked test into production this way, right, by the way. You can actually deploy code even without any tests. Yeah. This, is, this is like a workaround for Salesforce blocking the releases if you don't have yeah, coverage. Exactly. So actually, we, we last time said that, yeah, it's not a problem for us. We will just run the tests ourselves. And then we forgot about it. So we did a mathematician solution, right? We said, yeah, it's, we, we can solve it. And then we didn't implement the solution. Uh, so it's somewhere in the middle of the year, we found out that there's a lot of tests like failing in production, not run at all and, and all that. But uh, yeah, we solved it simply by running all the tests. And it's when you have smaller packages, it's actually easier to run all the tests for the whole package, even on pull request. Right, because for the whole org it will be too much, but just for the package it works pretty well. Yeah, so that's uh, the problems we have predicted, but uh, there's uh, also some that we haven't. Any ideas out there who thinks what could go wrong with our solution with all small org dependent packages? Do I hear some layouts out there? Yeah, flexi pages, layouts. Yeah, you're right. This is the problem that we actually encountered. So there is a package A and package B. If there is a specific layout, flexi page, or whatever that package A is only taking care of, it's easy, easy thing. You just put it in package A, the team is taking care of that, no issue. The issue is that there are some layouts, flexi pages, there, is there are applications that you want all packages to actually do something there, modify something, add something, and then where should this actually end up in? Package A, but then package B would have dependency to package A. But do we, do we actually want that? Because they are not business related, for example. Mm -hmm. No, we, we didn't want that. So the solution for that many packages and the problems with them is to create more packages to solve these problems. So we created a layout package. Uh, so all the UI components, basically, that and, and the other packages need to add something there, we, they just end up in those uh, layouts package. Yeah, and mm -hmm. layout packages knows about other packages. But of course, no package should be dependent on layout package. It's like a top level. Yeah, we actually ended up uh, having six versions of them, like not versions, but six uh, different layout packages because some banks want to have different layouts, right? So we ended up having six uh, like layout versions. So six different packages uh, and each bank can pick which, uh, which package they want, basically. But it's working pretty well. Yep. 
So similar solution we did, uh, similar to the layouts, we solved the permission set uh, problem because, uh, well, the idea is that each package adds permission sets for the functionality that, this, that it provides. Uh, and we created just a permission set group. So we figured, yeah, the same package we will do just package on top that is dependent on the functionality packages that has permission set groups that has permissions from all those packages. And then we ended up rewriting our permissions in production. No fun. But uh, we figured that it's better to actually have the permission set groups there. Uh, so they're just sitting in production, permission set group for advisor, admin, and whatever you want. And then the functionality package actually adds permission for itself in the post-installation script. Uh, so this way, the package actually controls when it adds permissions and to what it adds yeah, at exact moments. This was actually needed when because we have this pilot bank idea. Yeah. So if there if a package is only on pilot and only this bank should have this permission set, they are adding his, it on this production so they can test. Then we install uh, permission set groups package and you would overwrite it yeah, over and over again. That's why we needed to find a solution for that and we learned it a hard way basically. Uh, the other thing is that one year ago we told you try to put everything in a package, try with small packages. Unfortunately not everything can be put inside the org dependent package, at least yet. There are some stuff that you just have to either do manually or do a post or pre-deployment steps. That's, this is how we solve that, basically doing deployments. Uh, to give you an example of stuff you can't put, uh, put into package are, for example, experience bundles or some new AI stuff. They are just not ready yet. Uh, the other thing is uh, test environments. So as we mentioned, first of all, we, we merged from four different uh, setups. So there are some bank customizations of the big banks. So at the very beginning, we have already four different test, test environments, different setups. But the other thing is that we have pilots, uh, so the teams can go to production environments basically when they are ready. We don't have any set fixed dates. So they are going fast. They are going uh, without us as a bottleneck. So it's really difficult to keep like UAT, uh, UATs very up to date because usually they actually have even newer packages because we even out it with a production, then already uh, there is one team is already putting new package, they are putting it there. It's just difficult to handle it actually with so many teams and with uh, so many small packages. Yeah, the current solution is that we're actually having scripts that uh, just install it, uh, like sync it with production, right, afterwards. Uh, so when, when a package actually goes into production, pilot bank or whatever, we sync it back into the UAT so that it's as fresh as we can make it. And when teams are testing something, they just, they just know that they need to put it in UATs in those environments first and then check there. So uh, the last problem we want to talk about is uh, that that doesn't happen very often, but it also surprised us that because we try to keep it simple, right? A small package, uh, we're trunk based, everything goes to main, and we're just building uh, uh, package versions, tagging from from the main. So you actually you know put into production the, the version that you want. But there is a rare case when we actually need to maintain different versions of one package. Uh, that happens when, for example, you have package A that already went through to all the banks, it's in production, and then you have package B that only goes to a pilot, to one bank, uh, and that package B needs to introduce dependency to itself into the package A, right? So it cannot actually put that dependency everywhere because package B is only, only on one bank. So we actually need to create a second version of package A just for that pilot bank, and then version one is uh, everywhere else, right? It's mostly annoying when you need to do a short hotfix. Yeah, you, you want to do it yeah. fast, and then you need to all, again create two package versions with this hotfix. But as we mentioned, yeah. we are going really fast. So this is even if it occurs, it's not like we have it for a long time. We try to go to main as fast as possible, mm -hmm. go everywhere as fast as possible, and then this issue just disappears basically. Yeah, so many problems, but hope we didn't scare you uh, too much, at least. Uh, in general, our solution works, and we're still standing by it. So the pilot idea really kicked in, and teams are using that, that they like for being independent and being able to actually go straight, like, go to production by themselves, right? We're not the bottleneck here. Yeah, so, yeah, we are closer to business. Uh, our clients are happy. Teams need to take responsibility, of course, of their actions because uh, we are not the bottlenecks. We are not checking things through. So, uh, yeah, it's important that the teams that wants to go to to go to pilot bank, they need to be responsible. But mm -hmm. we see great benefits in that. Teams are working faster and better. Yeah, with great power comes great responsibility. But uh, in this way, we are more agile, right? So the teams really 
yep. like it and and use that. And we can actually see that it increases our speed. Here, uh, yes, last year until the end of March, we were actually still going with some legacy stuff, old BEC stuff. You can see that we were actually trying to end as many projects as we can before Scout actually started in new teams. And then, uh, because yeah, the, the, this diagram shows the pilot releases are the blue and the orange are normal, the community releases. So you can see that at the very beginning, the pilot banks were, like the idea of teams deploying to pilots were barely used because of course there were some holidays. But also teams need to, needed to develop their solutions. People needed to get used to that. POs needed to get used to deploying to pilot banks. But you can see that at the very end of previous year and the beginning of this year, it actually skyrockets. And now we are going to pilot banks almost two times uh, per day, more or less. And this actually also helped with our community releases. Why? Because the solution already is on one production. It's much easier than to put it on other productions. Yeah, because it's verified like by it's actually been working for I don't know weeks, months for, for in in one bank, so we know that in like, on like real production it's already working. It's much easier to put it to put it to the community, so we see big increase in the speed. Yeah, and also to be honest, teams were a little bit scared at the beginning, as you see, like you know, going in production is scary. But uh, as they learned, they're testing it, they're doing small iterations, so it really kicked in, and they are actually doing it. They they are going and working with the client. Yeah, also uh, another benefit is having uh, all the common packages like uh, separated, right? So all the logging, we show the trigger framework, like common utilities that teams use, we just have them in a separate package. Uh, yeah, obviously developers don't repeat themselves, they just can use the package and depend on it. And yeah, it really helps to develop also those common tools for all the teams, right? There are 10 teams, so if each team would do some stuff by themselves, it will be crazy. Yeah, and then there is last benefit that I, it's very important for me personally because in BEC we were having releases once per month. We we're preparing the releases for let's say a week to build new package, to gather every ticket and stuff, to solve conflicts. Uh, then when we needed to, for example, remove one of the tickets just before release, we needed to of course do some git commands. Sometimes it, was, it wasn't that easy. Uh, and then to rebuild a package, we needed a couple of hours because managed packages took a long time to build. If you try to do it on Friday, we had timeouts, for example, from time to time. Right now, if we need to rebuild an org-dependent package, it's one minute maximum if we really need to do that. Uh, also, uh, right now, as we have many small packages, if you sometimes we decide, yeah, we are not ready with this package, we can just drop this one package, yeah? Not, uh, not go with uh, big packages as we have, so we need to then remove tickets and rebuild package. Now we can drop a package if you need. Yeah, we're basically juggling packages instead of juggling commits, and it's easier. It's just easier. It's easier and faster. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so our yeah. message to, to you is just decentralize. Try to tr try to just remove all the bottlenecks, basically. Yeah, don't be a bottleneck as a DevOps. That's that's the main goal. And uh, yeah, really, teams can do the work themselves, right? And they really like it. I mean, they may be a bit bit scared at the beginning, but when they get to the idea that they can do stuff by themselves, they're usually very happy about it, and they work better. Yeah, but to achieve that, of course, you need to be agile. You exactly. need to work closely with a client because this, this is what we're talking about here all the time. So don't just do scr scrum, stand-ups and all that stuff. Really try working with the client. Uh, be there, right? So be, try to build a team that's really autonomous and doesn't need bottlenecks anywhere, right? And if you do yeah. it properly, when can we end up in, Sebastian? Well, of course, Package Valhalla. Yeah, we invite you to our Package Valhalla. Join uh, us. We know it was very fast because actually it was only a follow-up that we promised you one year, uh, one year ago. So if you have any questions, feel free. We will also be going somewhere there. So you can ask us anything. You can tell us, no, it's not working completely. You should do something differently. We are happy to hear that because then we can improve. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you.